an event turned into a nightmare. This is the situation when it came to Bungie's new activity, Heirs of Eternity. This story deals with what happens when things go wrong in a free-to-play game, when an oversight has dramatic consequences, and when a potential fix goes even worse. So, welcome to another video. One that I hope you stop memeing on me to make. Get the first try, bro! Bro! Oh! Oh! I'm on the plate! NT2! 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 Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yo, shout out to Raid Secrets, man! Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Also some footage? Me, live on Twitch at EvanF1997, where I live stream almost every single day. Link to my stream in the description. I'll be seeing you there. You know, this video got me thinking a lot recently. A lot of people in Destiny don't have a clan that they can call their own. And I really wanted to change that. So listen, if you are somebody that loves to play Destiny, but doesn't have a group of friends that play it, or has a group of friends, but not a big enough group that stays on consistently to do raids, nightfalls, whatever you want to do, look no further than the community clan called the Egberts. It's really simple to join. We have an application process in the description of this video, and it's all in my Discord. Very, very simple to join. Anybody is welcome. That doesn't matter if you're PC, doesn't matter if you're Xbox, doesn't matter whatever you're on, Stadia, I don't care, man. Whatever you wanna join, you're welcome to join. Doesn't matter what you look like, what you sound like, as long as you are mature and respectful, that's all we're looking for. Again, clan applications in the description. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys join. Gamer subs. Try free samples with the link down below or use code EVAN at checkout. They even have some new flavors this month. Okay, let's begin. Free to play has become synonymous with AAA games lately. Companies see an opportunity for free games since paid games would normally cost $60 with fully packaged systems, rewards, and risk that people wouldn't buy it. It's not rocket science for free to play. If I were to tell a friend that I have a game in early access where it's not finished, has issues to work out, and overall less polished, chances are they won't hate it. We've seen the biggest games in the modern day era of gaming come from free to play models, with Fortnite leading the charge for non-mobile games. This game set the precedent that any game can have crazy amounts of monetization built in, just like a mobile game, but it's free to enter it. Many games would quickly follow suit, and we'll get to Destiny's weirdly complex free-to-play model soon. Fortnite also invented the Season Pass model, where for a cheap price of $10, a player could rank up to level 100 for cosmetics at the end, increasing the playtime tenfold and increasing profit tenfold. Again, the science behind it is simple. If I told you my shirt was $60, but I had one print, you'd think twice before buying it. But if it's $10, but you can choose your own prints for more money, you'd definitely consider it way more. Video games would soon follow this behemoth of a model, and now you can't find a AAA game that has any form of multiplayer without some form of free-to-play. Most games have them in some form and have adapted them in their own ways. I say this because I believe one game has had the most complex free-to-play experience that I am familiar with, and the consequences of this free-to-play model have come to the topic of today's video. I don't mean to sound so dramatic, but imagine if you wanted to hop on a game that forced you into this nightmare. You'd be not only a bit annoyed, but also a bit intimidating to play. So let me get to the nightmare that was Dares of Eternity. Destiny has a convoluted pricing model. 
one that if you watched my previous video on the expansion that split the community's view you would know why to sum up the section of that video destiny has a lot to offer free to play players in the year of shadow keep but since various reasons happened it no longer has as much to offer yet still has the same free to play model in place there's nothing inherently wrong with free to play existing in destiny but the problem is when you give your audience less than the year before and give them an even more confusing experience free to play in the past had a lot of content and the side effect of sunsetting your game's content is that free to play players get hit hard the burden is made heavier for beyond light when the new free to play experience is one brought back from destiny 1's vanilla campaign which got review bombed for being a convoluted mess you jump in meet a character help him on a few missions that were in the same location as destiny 1's vanilla campaign then you're shoot out into the world without much to guide you except maybe a rick cacus youtube video if you went and did your own research new light was cast away and forgotten about by everyone until this new free to play Shepherd. activity came out yes vault of glass remaster was free to play and yes there is still core activities in the game like strikes gambit and regular pvp for free to play players too but on december 7th free to play became a nightmare when players entered and fought only raid bosses so hear me out normally when you match make in destiny you match players at random but for some reason dares of eternity has light level matchmaking enabled this meant that if I were a free to play player on December 7th and I wanted to play Dares of Eternity, I could be at a decent level for the activity. Hell, if I kept up with the game, I could even be the max level 1330. Most free to play players who wanted to check out Bungie's 30th anniversary, however, or returning players that just wanted to check it out in general, started at 1100 power, 50 levels under the recommended no mods no exotics nothing just 50 levels under and getting stomped the problem is that it's twofold one fold being that this activity forced players to jump into it at the start of the update so new lights and returning players had no choice but to try and bash their head against the wall to beat it there's champion enemy types in here which require mods that new lights just don't have yet there's mechanics in here that requires some teamwork for players that may have never touched the game. And of course, there's bosses for players to do a bee's weenie of health on shooting them. The other fold of this nightmare was that this activity was light-based matchmade. That meant for players who played Destiny consistently, they were having an easy time and everything was pretty standard fun, matching with people at their level. For the new lights, this meant the complete opposite. Grabbing their brothers and sisters in arms against what was going to be their slaughterhouse. The worst part of this is that nobody knew for a while. At least I didn't hear anything about new lights and this whole story for a long time. We did the research and it took weeks of suffering within this nightmare of an activity for anyone to catch wind. I'm sure it started with posts flooding into the Bungie forums, Reddit, Twitter, etc. Then as time went on, articles started catching wind of it. Now to a veteran player, this may seem like a dumb story altogether. I mean, free to play players can just go to orbit and avoid the activity. However, if I was completely new to Destiny, I wouldn't understand a lot either. I may end up turning off the game completely from the frustration of getting beaten down for hours, but going to orbit is kind of a weird thing to someone who's new. As the original Reddit post by user HateJong explains, I also lowered my own light levels below 1100 and challenged Dares of Eternity so I was able to meet many new players and returning players of one season level. But, unfortunately, some of them were tired of the continued death and turned off the game itself. Paul Tassi, a writer from Forbes, would go on to investigate this problem more and boost Jong's story to the masses. 
with the article titled, quote, Destiny 2 has accidentally trapped new players in Dares of Eternity Hill. Tassie went on to explain that not even Bungie probably knew this was happening, saying that, quote, Destiny 2 is a not great onboarding experience for new players for a while, but this is a new level of bad that I cannot imagine was intentional. I mean, I know that on its face, Bungie understood players would be dropped directly into Dares, but I think they just forgot about potential new lights at 1100 power with zero champion mods. Articles would soon follow suit, with many publishers wanting to jump on the story, but it took from December 7th to January 3rd for anyone to truly uncover the nightmare players were facing. Operation Save the New Lights launched and players started jumping into dares with lower level gear to matchmake. This community initiative also started great with many new lights being rescued from the hell they were going into and got to experience Destiny the way they were supposed to again. The memes from this are great, and the community celebrated a weird and complex case of free-to-play together. This event got so big that Bungie even released an emblem for helping the new lights. Now this emblem created some good and some bad here. The good being that more people were incentivized to help each other and you saw more people lowering their light levels to help out than ever before. The bad news is that since so many people lowered their lights down, most of the time you just matched fake new lights. People who were all just there to try and help out. And then they'd leave the game, so like if you wanted to do a dares, you had nobody in the game. Some say this was a case of imposter syndrome. Others say all the new lights quit and these imposters were just the scraps remaining, with only a few new lights left after the rest had suffered and vanished. The emblem was also a bit misleading, but it was just a great effort. The emblem was given if a player were to just complete Dares of Eternity till the 18th of January, so you technically didn't have to help out a new light, you just could have completed Dares from then to now. But the intention was good, and that's really how the story ends. Now, we can look back at this event and only hope that Free to Play gets its much deserved due. Dares of Eternity, a six player event that is supposed to be easy and fun for all. Narrated by a horse and a tentacle faced alien voiced by Chris Pratt. Dares is a great time. Free to Play, a model built very recently with a long road ahead to maintain it and evolve it. Destiny 2, yet another great case study for games across the board. Sometimes Destiny hits the nail right on the head, other times they forget the nail entirely. Dares of Eternity is now at a lower level to complement new lights, but the hammer may have already broken the hand that the nail was supposed to be in. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to sub for more, watch my live streams where I write these videos live, and enjoy some bloopers. Have a great rest of your day or night. Mm. So that's okay. That did not just happen. That did not just happen. Osteoporosis. I think this is what it's called, right? Oh. <laughs> wait, wait. Did I just call it osteoporosis? What the f Isn't that like medicine? What is os- <laughs> Yo, it's back pain. <laughs>